Hello, bet riders. The Laidback Bike Report is on the road and visiting local recumbent bike shops. These videos are made possible by TerraCycle, makers of exquisite recumbent parts and accessories. Today, we're in Colorado Springs, and right behind me is one of the oldest recumbent outfitters in America. It's AngleTech. Let's go on inside and meet Kelvin Clark and his crew. Come on. Hey, Hello, hey, Kelvin. Hey, 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 yes, it is. It's great to see you. Good thanks. See you. Well, thanks for inviting us here, Kelvin. Uh, we'd like to take a look around and talk to you a little bit about your shop, if we could. Sure. Uh, is that okay with you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Should we have a seat on a couple of trikes? Maybe we'll have a little conversation? Yeah, we got a few around here. How about these two over here? Sounds great. All right, Kelvin. Now, this is a comfy spot to be talking to you from. Let's, um, let's start with the history of AngleTech. Tell me a little bit about uh, the genesis of the whole operation. Well, the Genesis started out with, uh, we have a, a bike we'll look at later here called the Avatar 2000. And in Seattle, back in 79, I had a guy come into the shop named Roger Hoffeditz, and he asked me what I knew about recumbents. And I said, I didn't know anything about recumbents, but I'd be happy to learn. So he ordered one, and he allowed me to keep it two weeks after we got it so I could learn, so I could learn about recumbents. So and previous to that, Kelvin, you were at a, working in a regular bike shop, is that right? Is yeah, that a traditional bike shop in Seattle, Angle Lake Cyclery. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, and up to that point, uh, we'd never done anything like this. And at that period of time, Avatar was the only one making good recumbents. And then at the time, then there was something called the Hypercycle that was really a junky recumbent, and that was kind of it. So, so with, uh, so long wheelbase was sort of, where good stuff started. Okay, and so that was your introduction to recumbents in the first place. Now tell me how you got from that introduction to your first shop. Um, well, in that shop, it ran concurrent with upright bikes. And at that time, you couldn't sustain a shop just on recumbent bikes. So we added, uh, we had ran, uh, ran Stratus at the time. We added a linear, the, just different bikes over time. I guess the early 90s, it came to a point where when I went to work every day, I spent all of my time with recumbent situations. So that was when the move happened to Colorado. And that was in 1993. And then the shop was 100% recumbents. And it was just simply taking a gamble that since all of the day's work was on recumbents, that this could be a sustainable business. And that's what was, uh, that's when it became all recumbents. Now, what brought you to Colorado? So you were in Seattle, right? And right. so why, why did you come to Colorado? Um, it was just one of those things where some, uh, a friend had moved from LA to Breckenridge, visited that person out on a, on a vacation and went back and decided that was the place to go. And it was just a vibe thing and it wasn't anything more than that. Okay, but well, a pretty good vibe I'm guessing. Yeah. Now, this was Woodland Park, right? This was your that first shop here. 20 miles from here. Right, right. That's, so that's where you started with the recumbents here in Colorado. Yeah. So how long were you in Woodland Park? Um, 93 to 2010. And then this building was 2010. Okay, and so then you moved uh, the operation from Woodland Park here to Colorado Springs. That's right. And, yeah. uh, and opened up this nice uh, new shop. Kelvin, as I look around this beautiful shop, uh, besides all of the uh, bikes and trikes I see on the floor, I noticed you have a number of interesting looking uh, vehicles hanging uh, from the walls and the ceiling. Tell me a little bit about what, what this is about. Uh, these are just historical touchstones. And, they're, and um, these were all hung up by Kirk here because we would store them away. And it's sort of like, well, why not bring them out? And so he hung them up. And so we can look around and tell some of those stories. Yeah, when we take the tour, I think maybe we'll talk about some of those things. But it's a great idea. So when people come here, not only do they come here, they can uh, look to purchase uh, a bike or a trike. Mm -hmm. They can also get a little, uh, a little bit of history as they look around as well. Right, yeah. There's some real good stories there. Calvin, I know that uh, you guys have a motto here, uh, and it's called uh, Cycle Different. And I'm going to ask you uh, a little bit about what makes AngleTech uh, unique among recumbent bike shops, and I think that's probably a great intro to do that. Uh, where did you come up with Cycle Different, and, and how is AngleTech different than most other recumbent shops? Well, I can't from the outside, because from the inside, AngleTech, we knew the genesis was from 
a literal angle lake in Washington State and all that other kind of stuff. But it was an inside story. So when we moved the store in 2010, uh, we dealt, we had a marketing company uh, help us with colors, help us with things like that. And we had sort of a brainstorming session. And when they saw what we did, it was obvious that cycle different made sense when you walk in the door. And then we had somebody from Los Angeles come in here um, shortly thereafter. They walked in the door. They knew nothing about our history. And they looked around the room and she saw the cycle different above the door. And she looked in here and it made total sense and like that. So that's what it was. It was sort of like something right in front of our face the whole time. But we didn't see it. Someone else saw it. And it just captures the whole concept yeah. of, the, of your store you beautiful. Around here, everything is different. I mean, we do, you know, these days it's 90% recumbents, but there are other things in here. You know, we have folding bikes and we have debrims that hang there for the sun and we have all kinds of spinning uh, fazilies that are for visibility. So everything in here has a story. And everything in here is different than what you typically find in a regular store. What kinds of services uh, do you offer your customers here at AngleTap? Um, first of all, I guess is we do a, a we do demos. We believe in riding the stuff. Okay, so we usually do the interview with a customer in the process, but usually wrapped up at the end, but it, before that, we take real cycles outside, and we believe in everybody riding everything twice. So we always say the first ride is fiction, the second ride is the truth. And so we want people to stay long enough to do that. And then they ride through a selection of cycles, uh, you know, direct steering, indirect steering, lower seat, higher seat, all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, and then we have a visit with them afterwards. Um, and in the middle of it all, we do want to know if they have bionic body parts or other issues and things like that, and we'll cover those kinds of things. Um, then we ask them to run a movie through their mind about what they're going to do with the cycle that they've preferred after they've run the demo. And we want them to run the movie and tell us what's in the movie so that we can apply things like the right tires or you know other circumstances that we can address. Okay? Yeah, it really helps you to hone in on what their right. needs are gonna be. Correct. And then the other thing that we're known for is doing a lot of adaptive stuff. So um, we always tell people that you can't scare the crap out of us. So you can come in here in any form you are and we are happy to embrace what's going on. And uh, we have enough resources uh, through all the kinds of people in the recumbent business. A lot of recumbent companies have taken on adaptive equipment and uh, that kind of stuff. So we'll never give anybody any kind of false uh, uh, thing just to sell a cycle. What we do pay very close attention to is all these little details. And frequently that gets people out cycling uh, that wouldn't otherwise be out cycling. So the adaptive um, part of your business, is that significant? Is it a significant it part? It is, and I can't really put a percentage on it, but it's still mostly mere mortals, okay? And then the adaptive side is uh, uh, what it is. We are involved with the uh, City of Colorado Springs with their adaptive cycling program, and it's run out of here two Saturdays a month on average, except for the winter. Um, and that's a one-on-one -on -one attention program where there's a volunteer that rides with the person, um, three different levels of ability, that kind of stuff. Um, we do off-site events, um, and, uh, and we, we support that kind of thing in the, in the community, and uh, I think that's a real big deal. Yeah, and, and clearly it means a lot to you also. I mean, there's a, there's a component to what you do that uh, gets a lot that that brings you a lot of gratification. I can kind of sense that, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes maybe to helping. Well, uh, certainly helping people with adaptive needs. But I bet to a anyone that comes in and finds a, a bike or a trike that they can uh, suddenly ride and and love to get out. What what does that mean to you as an owner of a shop? You've been doing this a long time. Is that a very important part of what you do? Oh yeah, I mean, the first, I mean, when you visit with uh, Kirk and Josiah here in a bit, I mean, the first question, if you want to work here is, the question is, do you like humans? That's the first question. So if you like humans, then, then we're good. Right. Uh, and so we don't really get stale and bored with right. the people that come in. We, right. we have a lot of characters that come in here. 
Yeah, yeah. And you love all that. pretending to like humans is probably not good enough, is it? I don't think so. Because <laughs> okay. yeah. you can usually tell, can't you? Oh, I think so, yeah. yeah. I, I totally agree. I think that's great. Okay, Kelvin, and uh, to kind of wrap that up, I was wondering if you can kind of tell us, uh, if you can give us an idea about the future direction for Angletech in the, in the coming years. What, do you have anything in mind? We are always interested in, in new, new things, okay? So this past year, electric longboards. Okay, so that's not a recumbent, but Josiah had this idea and we went with it and it was a great idea. So it's a longboard with an electric motor, belt driven by a Gates belt and all that kind of stuff. So let's just say for 2018, it was the electric longboard. Now, we didn't know that was coming. It just kind of arrived and it was something we decided we were gonna do. We learned about it. Every fall, as far as future, mm -hmm. we do little field trips. So we have a pretty tight relationship with TerraCycle. So we go out to Portland, Oregon, um, and we've done it now three years in a row where we go out there, we learn about stuff. We, we use an awful lot of their equipment in our store. And uh, so we do a lot of off-campus kind of stuff. And what that does is we come, like we're all going to RCC, for example. That, that generates pages of notes a sit-down meeting and all that kind of stuff. So that keeps us fresh, that keeps us interested, and it might open new doors to new things. Right. So that's kind of how we do things. So the point of it all, of course, is that you are open to new ideas and always looking for always, what yeah. might be the next important we like thing. We think we're not recumbent snobs and against new ideas. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So. Kelvin, I think maybe we'll head up and uh, stand up out of the trikes here and maybe uh, take a little tour of... Uh, of Angletech and, and meet your staff. Would that okay. be all right? That sounds good. Okay, Calvin, you mentioned a little bit earlier on uh, the Cycle Different uh, logo that you guys use, mm -hmm. and you do have it posted like right at the top of the shop here. Tell me about this. Well, if you look up, it says cycledifferent.com. And uh, we, when we were doing the build out here, uh, we needed to get that accomplished. And there's a local company called Tau of Metal, and they came out, looked at it, and they asked us when we wanted it, and I said yesterday, and literally one or two days later, two guys showed up, and they did this with a plasma cutter, and they put it up, and there we have it. Well, we've walked in the door, and I wanna get a little better understanding of the building mm -hmm. and what it's composed of as well, because there's some very interesting things here. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead and start with the floor. As it turns out, that's an yeah, interesting so component. So the floor is um, inspired by this uh, recycled carpet called floor. It's a tile type system. And when you walk in the door here, you're gonna see a black, what is a tree trunk. Okay, so as you go through the showroom, it's a tree. And it's made out of favorite jeans. And if you look at the black, you'll see copper thread in it like your favorite jeans. Okay, the green part of it is called you only live twice. So this carpet is 100% recycled um, carpet here, this green stuff. Kelvin, go ahead and tell me about uh, this unusual wall. Well, the design of the space in general, the credit goes to a local guy named John Sacony. And he came and did the drawings and built it out. And one of the things was the curved wall. And then inspired by some cardboard chairs we had seen at a showroom up in Denver, um, he asked for some cardboard. So we gave him some Rand's bicycle boxes. And he then created this uh, polycarbonate trail along the wall here. And these laminated pieces of cardboard are Rand's bicycle boxes that he used as an element in the design. All right, Kelvin, uh, so you have a shop floor just filled with recumbents of all sorts, and you have lots of different uh, brands and models. I was wondering if you can give us a brief idea of where things are and what do you carry? Okay. Well, the fortunate thing is, is that uh, we have good relationships with really creative people in the recumbent world. Just there's lots of good companies. Um, so if we were to take, starting over here, uh, those are the two wheelers. And the majority of things, as everybody knows these days, is trikes, but we still sell recumbent bikes. And there's been a bit of an increase in that in the last year, so they're coming back a little bit. But on the wall here, we've got Azib from the Czech Republic, uh, which is an excellent company. And so we have their bikes. We have Rands from Montezuma, Kansas. We've got Bachetta here from uh, Florida. And then after we get through that section of two-wheeled recumbents there, um, we 
go to uh, crank forward bikes. So crank forward bikes are another genre. They're not an upright bike and they're not a recumbent bike. They're sort of a blend between the two. And we've always had them since they were uh, created by Randy Schlitter. And uh, we've always had a solid business with those. Um, and then uh, we have a few upright bikes, which are folding bikes, and they're Montagues, which is a large wheel folding bike, full size. Then we have a company called Turn, which is another excellent company that makes folding bikes as well. Um, so, and then if we take it to the to the row next here, we have Ice from Cornwall, England, excellent company again, really good designs, high quality. Um, and then Terra Trike from uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. You'll see their uh, cycles here. Um, and you'll see uh, Catrike Dumont sitting here, uh, another excellent company from Florida. And then we have Hase from Germany, and this is the Pinot Tandem. We also have some trikes behind us here, but they're uh, also an excellent uh, company. So, uh, and then above our heads, we've got a Rand's Tandem hanging here that's uh, suspended from the ceiling. All right, Kelvin, and then uh, the second half of the show floor here, what do we have? So the second half has got a little more variation. So <laughs> if you start over here, there's a hand magnum up there by Green Speed. So that's a hand cycle on the top of the rack. Uh, we've got more uh, Aza Bice and Cat Trike over there. Then we've got Fat Trikes. So we have uh, that type of situation. And in Colorado, there's a unique breed of people that get uh, fat trikes every year. Um, and then we've got the, uh, the TIE Fly X over here. We've got a bit of electricity going on. So we have the Scorpion full suspension uh, steps electric trike. It's only been here about three days. This is a new demo replacement. Uh, that just came in here. We've got a, an AZIB with a Copenhagen motor on it in the back. And then we've got some other technology here. We have a trike here with an Alphine 11 electric shift internal hub and an FNEO crank set. So everything's inside. Electric shift is something people don't see every day. The uh, crank set without a derailleur. It's got a fairing on it. We've got Ian's new Green Speed X7 sitting here that just arrived. 16-inch uh, wheels are back in town uh, with his new trike. And then we have the uh, Haze um, Cat Vesel and Trico trikes over here at the end. Um, and then we have a trailer from Scotland that we sell. And then we have an interesting laser helmet that looks like it's out of science fiction, but it's a great summer winter helmet combo that we brought in here. So uh, anyway, and then we have our TerraCycle component wall over there. And then we have other accessories along the wall here. And I guess above us, we should probably point out yeah. the Aeropods. And we've always done our own line of bags for many, many years. And from a briefcase looking sort of an affair that you see there on the far left, uh, to the Aero trunk that you'll see the big Aero bag. And then the one above is uh, the WS uh, Aeropod, which is a really nice yeah. bag setup. All of them made in the States and all really nice quality. So Calvin, let's uh, let's start talking about some of the historical uh, bikes uh, that we have here. And right over our shoulder looks like a pretty interesting one. What do we have there? So that blue one up there is a uh, Dursley Peterson. And when you look at it, it's a space frame bike. It doesn't look like a traditional bike. And if you look at it long enough, it looks like a crank forward bike. So, um, and it was something that was um, out of the UK in the late 1800s. And this is a modern reproduction of it. So if we didn't have recumbents today, we'd be doing those because at that time it was the most comfortable bike. You could put your feet down and you sit on a leather sling seat and you have a, a handlebar position where you're not leaning into the bars. So it's a pretty cool idea. It kind of relates to recumbents. If you know what a kick bike is, the only reason why it relates to this story is that when uh, Azeb came here a couple of years ago uh, for a visit, uh, there was a Pikes, they rode to the top of Pikes Peak, okay? And Milan, the production manager there, um, asked if he could ride the kick bike. And we knew that he had a past in kick bikes before he came to work for them. And I thought, and I put a recumbent in the van because of that. Milan will probably not really want to do this. So we got over to Pikes Peak Highway and he wanted to do it. So he literally took the kick bike 
and rode it all the way up Pikes Peak. And down. And down. <laughs> so, so No there, brakes on that thing, right? It's got brakes, oh, but not that great of brakes. Right, not that it's going to stop right. you really well. So, so it relates to our history in the sense that somebody from a recumbent company did ride it. So the blue one there is a uh, Angletech MC squared. We've done a couple of our own projects over the years. Uh, these days there's so much brilliance going on, we don't think we have to invent new things. But that one is a, a short wheelbase level crank recumbent. It was designed by Mark Colleton. Um, and uh, Mark Noblet was the frame builder and who still builds beautiful bikes. So the one over shoulder now is called a counterpoint presto. And in the late 80s and early 90s, we did almost exclusively counterpoint prestos. Most of them were steel. The one behind us is titanium. There were only five of those built. And that even has a titanium fork, which you don't see titanium fork anything very much. So that just is a, a very good representation of uh, something that quite a few people uh, rode around on the earth, but there's only five of the tie ones. Kelvin, there's a hand cycle over our shoulder. Yeah, and that's actually an arm and leg powered cycle. So it's a dual body cycle. And for a number of years, we built those. And uh, they were invented by a guy named Richard Rao in, Cal in um, Oregon, who uh, had also some input in other recumbent creations around. So Richard designed that cycle, and we ended up, um, when he was involved heavily with Bike E, uh, we ended up uh, bringing jigs out here, and Mark Noblet built them in Colorado. Calvin, uh, tell me what I'm sitting on here. Okay, so this takes us to, to our original story about the Avatar 2000 from Massachusetts. So it's a long wheelbase recumbent. It has underseat steering. It's handmade. It has uh, Reynolds tubing, um, Imran paint. You'll see a lot of leather on it, including the leather straps holding the mesh seat to the rails, and the rack in the back is actually suspended with leather. So that's kind of a cool thing about it. Um, one of the principles about it is, if uh, Gary, you got one hand on the I A do. handlebar on the right, you'll notice that Gary only has two fingers of one hand on the handlebar. One of the comments earlier this morning was, it needs longer handlebars. Well, actually, that was one of the fundamental principles of the bike, is that it's only supposed to have two fingers of your hand, on the handlebar, and then that leaves your leftover two fingers to shift the bar end shifter. Oh, I got it. So that's an actual like, yeah. deliberate thing. That's not an oversight, that it needs longer handlebars, okay? And uh, so anyway, this, this was a limited run of cycles. They built them for about four years, uh, and they quit building them because they didn't make any money when they were building them, so they couldn't sustain it. But they were beautiful bikes, and they did launch recumbents in America. All right, Kelvin, where are we going now? Uh, we're going into the laboratory. All, All right. All the magic happens. <laughs> I love magic. Let's go see it. All right. Let's do it. Okay. So this is Josiah. Hey, everyone. Hey, Josiah. So uh, what exactly do you do at Angletap? Gosh, what do I not do here? I'd say I'm sort of uh, Kelvin's uh, uh, advocate in, in the sense that I do kind of what Kelvin does, but I also... Uh, when Kirk is overloaded, I switch over to mechanic mode and help him out. And so uh, a lot of stuff running the website, uh, you know, doing customer consultations uh, and really a lot of just mechanical stuff, visiting, uh, uh, visiting adaptive programs, doing things like that. And so, How long have you been working for Angletech? I started in uh, 2016 in August, and so this will be my third year. And what did you do before this? Before I worked at uh, Planetary Cycles in Houston for almost 10 years, and so uh, uh, a lot of recumbents there as well. So that's kind of where I got my recumbent background was was in Texas. And how do you like working at Angleton? Uh, What's I, I should say. What's special so, about working yeah, in Angleton? Even with Kelvin not standing here, I could say that it's my absolute favorite place I worked. I think I think that as an employee here, we get to really be ourselves and and just interact with humans on a very uh, genuine level. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks to my Anvers helmet, my brain was perfectly protected. It's pretty nice to just kind of work in a in, in a business where your your customers aren't your enemy; they're your friends. And when you come in, you're when they come in, you're excited to see them. All right, where are we heading now? Uh, well, this is workstations here. I work here, and uh, so this is where 
you, this is your office essentially, this is right? My office, yeah. Okay. Anything on there you don't want us to shoot? No, there's no secrets. <laughs> it's just it's not the prettiest place on the planet. Yeah. But it's uh, where all the action happens, I guess, yeah. right? All right. Yeah. And, and uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I kept hearing barking oh, during the interviews. What what this what is the heck? This part of our crew. This yeah, is come on silly. Down. Silly, come on out. You want to come on out? Come on. Come on. There we go. Oh, there it goes. So she's our resident corgi and uh, checks out the vibe of everybody coming in. So <laughs> the uh, shop dog. Yeah. We have Denise over here and she's keeping us out of jail. Denise <laughs> keeping us out of jail. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good. Keep up the good work. Yeah. I want to come back. Maybe do another interview. I'm need him here. So thank you. All right. And and now what? Well, now we have. Kirk over here. This is Kirk. kind of a good way to see Kirk. Look at this. This is what the heck is he doing? He's building a Sturmy Archer. Here, let's come on behind him. Yeah, Sturmy Archer three by hub in a 16 inch wheel for a new Green Speed X7. All right, let's say hello to Kirk. So, hello, Kirk. How you doing? <laughs> you had a spoke in your mouth, didn't you? Uh, had what, a what does that make you a spokesman of some kind, I or a, a spokesman around? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what? Uh, what is your position here, Kirk? Mostly mechanic, but we all will do everything that needs to be done. Yeah, that's what Josiah said. So that's a that's kind of a great attitude. Sales, I'll do demos. All right, tell me what the favorite thing you do is. Oh, the mechanic part of it. And how long have you been here at Angletown? Yeah. Oh, I think seven years. Uh, you can't even call it work. It's we get to come here forty hours a week. So you <laughs> love it too, don't you? Oh yeah. Okay. It's just a great place. Every day is different is the best part of it. Right. You never know what's going to walk in the door. What is going on here? Receiving in, inbound stuff. So uh, we see all the trucks. We see the UPS, the FedEx ground, and the FedEx air almost daily. And, uh, and then this is our, our shipping bench, and even the shipping bench designed by John has a place for recumbent size boxes and various things like that. A particularly uh, humorous story came to you. I want to hear this. Okay, well, the funny story is this man behind us. Yeah. And this is Roger Reddish. Uh -huh. And uh, he came, kind of parachuted into our lives on a floor of a hospital at a stroke thing a few years ago. And he, we've never been able to get rid of him since. So what he did was, after we did our little thing there, he was riding a rover around the floor of the hospital, around the nurse's station, all that other kind of stuff. And when it came from time for me to leave, he, got, he rode it into the elevator and he went down the elevator and rode it out of the building. And I thought- okay, The hospital. The hospital, right. And uh, so there's a, a funny story, um, but after that we never, We've seen Roger almost every day since. Yeah. And no no damage done. Just to anyone or any no. patients. No, other. no, no. And nobody good got good job, Roger. Nobody got busted and nobody went to jail. Yeah. So that there it is. Roger Reddish. And that Kelvin, I was uh, hoping to get a little test ride on uh, one of your fine trikes. So uh, what are you gonna set me up with? Okay, so this is a TIE Fly X from Mazib, and it is the recumbent trike of the year, just voted. So on uh, Bent Rider. On Bent Rider, that's right. So uh, anyway. This is uh, related to that, and we've got you on it, and I'm just gonna go through the general sequence of how we would fit you to a cycle. Perfect, okay. all right. So the first thing is uh, the seat angle. So are you comfortable with the seat angle? Because the seat angle is adjustable on most trucks. I am, it feels just, just right. So you don't need it more upright or more reclined. Seems right. All right, so we'll start with that. Um, we start here because uh, the more upright you sit, the more vertical load on your spine, the more reclined you are, the less vertical load on your spine, and some people have certain spinal issues, and that's why we address that, okay? The other thing is, is that your seat angle does influence your leg length. So if we did the leg length first and then adjusted the seat, we'd have to go back and do it over. So the more upright you sit, it, technically speaking, your X seam gets shorter or it, or it moves your hip that direction. And the more reclined you are, the more reclined your hip, or your, the further back your hip joint goes. So that's the reason why we start there, okay? Mm -hmm. Number two, we can do the leg. And like with any other cycle, you put your heel up on the pedal first 
and you've got too much bend in the knee here. So what we need to do is we need to make this leg be straight with the heel on. And then by the time Gary puts his cleat in the pedal, he'll have the appropriate amount of slight bend in the knee, okay? So let's go ahead and put the foot down. We're gonna take the quick releases, which this one particularly has. And we're gonna slide this out. And without binding it down, we're just gonna have Gary be gentle with his heel. And then he's gonna do that, okay? So now his leg's straight, okay? So we're gonna say that that's a pretty good guess. Go ahead and put your foot back down. All right. All right, and we're gonna bind the quick releases here. And there we are. Now, the next thing is we're going to check handlebars. So uh, I know you got the mic there, but just go ahead and put your hand on the handlebar. And does that feel comfortable or do you wish it were more forward or more back? I'm thinking maybe a, a bit forward. Okay. So what I'm going to do is reach down here. So I'm going to be kind of a laying on the ground guy. Sometimes I do that. Okay. We never knew that we were gonna get Calvin actually lying on the ground for this uh, video, but yeah. we have done it. Uh oh. Okay. So let's try one notch forward. All right. Right there. I'm gonna get a four millimeter Allen wrench here. Okay, Gary, so now just grab the handlebars and then rotate them forward until you find uh, I see what you're saying. Nir Nirvana here. Okay. That's Nirvana right there. Excellent, okay, so what we notice here is that Gary's elbow before the mic was near his hip and that gave him enough reach so he doesn't yank on his shoulders when he does a turn and he can make the back angle work. So that's what we're looking for is the spot that works both ways. And now we're gonna bind this down. And then once we've done that, we've really done the three pillars of getting things adjusted correctly. The final frontier is on your shoes. I want to check out the bottom of your shoes. And good for you. I have them all the way you to the rear? You have them all the way to the rear. Okay, so the reason why I'm looking at the bottom of your shoes is because when you set up for a wedgie bike, you put the cleats underneath the ball of the foot. When you set up for a recumbent, you put the cleats on the rear set of holes and as far back as you can get them. And that puts your ball of your foot just beyond the pedal shaft. Now, it's not a scientific study, it's just life experiences over fitting people on recumbents, and that is the way you do it on a recumbent. And some folks even go like midsole, right? I mean, I've read a lot. Yeah, I mean, you, this is not a, like an ironclad rule, but it is, a, it is the place to start. Because if you do it over the ball of the foot, usually you end up with numb feet or pressure points or things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's just one of those little recumbent things, and you've got it on your shoes, so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, that means a lot, okay. Now, you're just gonna cleat in. Okay. Nice. Yeah, it looks good. And then pop in the other one here. Go. Now, before Gary sat down, we had already set the parking brakes. So the other thing about a recumbent uh, trike is you always have parking brakes, okay? So we just released this one, okay? And then we're gonna go over and release this one. And the reason why we have them in the first place is because when you get on a recumbent trike, if you don't have parking brakes set, it's gonna be a moving target. So this saves your dignity. The seat supporter is gonna stay where you want it to be. And that's how it works. So now the other part is you don't wanna leave the parking brake on because if you do that, you're gonna have an extra workout. So we're released and you're free to, free to enjoy the trike. All right, here we go. Yeah, feels good. That feels great. Kelvin, thank you so much for setting me up. We're going to take a little test ride okay. and we'll stop back and check in with you when we're all done, but uh, appreciate right. it so much. All Thanks. Right. Thanks.
That was one amazing test ride on the Azub TIE Fly X. Wow, what a ride through the Garden of the Gods. Coming on back to Angle Tech now. That was a great one. Woo! All right, guys, so we've had a great day here at uh, Angle Tech. Um, a wonderful tour and uh, got a chance to see everything that goes on and a great test ride in the Garden of the Gods. Hope you guys enjoy uh, the video that we make here. And I want to thank uh, so much the guys at Angle Tech uh, who have uh, opened up the store to us to, uh, to let us see what goes on behind the curtain. So uh, for Kirk and uh, Josiah, oh, and wait, Larry, come on back. Yeah, and here is Larry Seidman, my cameraman, the intrepid guy, and most of all, uh, Kelvin Clark, who uh, the owner of the place, who showed us around and really uh, made us feel welcome. Thanks so much, Kelvin. You're welcome, Gary. Thanks for finding us on your map of adventure. Appreciate okay. it. It was an adventure, too, so. All right, guys. Bye. See ya. Yeah. Action. Well, there's not much action, really. <laughs> That's the recommended way, and then are you supposed to smack it into the chain exactly. ring of the... <laughs> okay, we'll come back a little bit later then. Now here's what comes in right here. That looks particularly comfortable. Yeah, it's a left... <laughs> You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. So my, I, okay. I, I might be a might be a little higher inter voiced interview. Come on over on this side. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh. Okay. Shoot. You know what? We're gonna pause. Can we pause this? We're pausing. 